Oh hello Dragonfly Swarm. So Genshin Impact 3.3 has introduced us to Faruzan and Wanderer, two new characters that are really fun, and a lot of the player base seems to be satisfied with Wanderer's playstyle. But there is a topic of discussion that's becoming more and more common with Faruzan, and it could be a problem. Faruzan is a dedicated animo support, and that on its own is nothing out of the normal. We've seen niche elemental support characters like Goro, Sara, and Shinha before, but the problem is Goro, Sara, and Shinha are all functional even at C0. They all perform competitively in their respective roles because it's what they do best, or rather the only thing that they do. So they start out strong, and then they end up the strongest characters in their niche by the time they're C6. Faruzan does not have this luxury, and in fact at C0 she is so difficult to play that a lot of guide makers and theory crafters avidly recommend just not using her. And I shouldn't have to explain why that's a problem, but in this video I will be explaining why that problem exists, what it means for Faruzan, Wanderer, and other characters like them, and what this all means for Genshin Impact as a whole, because the implications are, I suppose, a little bit concerning. But before I start, if you enjoy this video or it helps you in any way, please consider subscribing as it very much helps my channel. And also, slight disclaimer, this video is going to remain as unbiased as possible for the important parts, but I will be leaving room for my own thoughts and opinions on the issue as well. With that all said, let's begin. So Faruzan falls within the niche of elemental buffer supports. Just like how Goro is the premier buffer for Geo characters, Sara is the premier buffer for Electro characters, and Shinha is the premier buffer for Cryo characters. Faruzan is, mathematically by a long shot, the strongest buffer for animal damage dealers in the game. She has extremely valuable animal resistance shred, she also grants a huge animal damage bonus to your teammates, and arguably even does a little crowd controlling, but it's not much, so whatever. So already at C0, she provides some of the rarest forms of utility any animal character could want, and that is true. But the problem is, at C0, her energy management is absolutely horrible. That's important because all of her valuable utility that I just mentioned is locked behind her burst, so bad energy management management means no burst, and no burst means your Faruzan is just taking up a team slot for literally no reason. To put that into context, during my time testing her out at C1, thanks to Hoyoverse granting me early access, I had to run nearly 280% energy recharge with Favonius Bow on her, and she still sometimes couldn't burst off cooldown. I'm still molding. That's already absolutely horrible as it is, but it's even worse for Faruzan because she likes running 4-piece Viridescent, and she likes having decent base attack for her 4th Ascension passive, but she can't do those things at C0 because she has to focus focus basically every possible stat she has into energy recharge. Goro, for example, doesn't have this issue, mainly because he pairs in mono geo teams, so energy circulation isn't a problem at all. And the same can be said about Sara, because Electro Resonance helps her out, and oftentimes so do her teammates. But Faruzan sits as the animo buffer, meaning her teams will always consist of Heizo, Wanderer, or Xiao as her main carry, none of which characters provide her with good battery potential, meaning she has to be able to battery herself, but she can't. So all of that basically means that in order for Faruzan to even be able to use her kit, she has to sacrifice about 90% of her potential for energy recharge. So therefore, at C0, the team DPS damage difference between her and other sub DPSs or buffers is so small, it's not even worth using her a lot of the times. Which is really unfortunate, especially considering other niche elemental buffers don't suffer from this issue anywhere near as dramatically as she does. It's also unfortunate because she's very fun to play. But what's really interesting is, she becomes legitimately basically a completely different character at C6. She goes from being one of the most impractical buffers in the game to one of the strongest elemental buffers. And it's all because of her energy. Because at C6, her burst now spawns vortexes from her elemental skill, which not only generate particles as if she were constantly casting it, but it also restores flat energy to her thanks to her C4, which amounts to an absolutely crazy amount of energy for her over a long period of 16 seconds, and she doesn't even have to be on field to enjoy it. That's absolutely insane in general, but especially when you consider that this is the same character who at C0 barely even functions with 280% energy recharge. And what that all means is that she'll no longer have to sacrifice so much of her buffing and sub DPS potential for energy recharge. She becomes very good. You can opt out of using energy based bows in favor of bows with more base attack and offensive stats. You can much more comfortably run 4 piece viridescent. You can be much more relaxed with your rotation strategies. The whole shebang. But why is it such a dramatic turn? As I mentioned earlier, Faruzan falls within the same niche as Goro, Sara, and Shinha. And the only character out of those three that feels impractical at C0 is Sara but even then, her potential is still very tangible. Goro isn't explicitly the strongest buffer for Geo at C0, but he's very easy to use and still very competitive within that niche, and then obviously as a 5-star character, Shinha is already rather competitive within her niche at C0, and even beyond that, she's just a good character in general for cryo units. The common theme here is that, despite how well they scale with their constellations, none of these characters feel anywhere near as hindered at C0 as Faruzan does. Therefore, the implication is that Faruzan is a new wave of characters that will be dramatically enhanced 
points by their constellations, but very weak at C0. And that is what leads me into the next big point of the video. Is this bad design philosophy? Or rather, is this going to be bad for the future of Genshin Impact and its characters? Yeah, it's rather subjective, but my first impression is no. I don't think this is going to be how most new characters are designed for a few reasons. Firstly, even at C6, many of Sumeru's characters, namely the four stars, have been blatant side grades or even just downgrades of characters that we already have. So it's quite clear from the past few patches that HoYoVerse isn't afraid to release average or below average four stars. And as much as some people will probably disagree, I think a below average four star is exactly what Faruzan is when she's at C0, because her entire purpose is so hard to pull off that many people recommend just not using her. And in all honesty, it wouldn't be weird or out of the ordinary if she was just an average four star at all constellations, or rather, it would feel normal if her constellations didn't provide such an absolutely massive change to her viability. Because there are very few, if any, four stars in the entire game that go from being borderline unplayable to being one of the best characters in their niche with constellations. That is to say that Faruzan is one of the first real cases we've seen where constellations legitimately change the character. And I don't think we'll see another one as dramatic as Faruzan very often, if ever. I say this because not only does she fall within the niche of elemental buffers, which are notorious for having huge power spikes at C6, but she's also an animal buffer, which is an extremely niche gameplay style right now. And the thing about niche gameplay styles is that you can choose to completely ignore it and you'll probably never notice that it's there. And that is exactly why I don't personally think it's the end of the world for Faruzan, nor do I believe Genshin Impact is going to suffer or continue to push characters like this patch after patch. Keep in mind, Wanderer is a character that players were anticipating and saving for for a very long time, and it would be dumb to assume HoYoVerse didn't anticipate this when designing him. So what would be the best course of action for such a highly anticipated character that players have already been saving for for the past two and a half years? <coughs> From a business standpoint, it would probably be to make him a niche hyper carry so that players who have loads of money or prima gems can hyper invest and receive lots of payout for their investment. And that logic directly ties in with Faruzan, who is obviously Wanderer's best teammate. With low investment, they're exceptionally average characters, but luckily they're also technically niche characters, just like Ito and Goro or Mono Cryo with Shinha or this, that, and the other. Which means that if you don't want to invest in them or can't heavily invest in them, it's not at all the end of the world. There are plenty of other teams that are wildly less expensive to invest in and play, and even if you do decide to play these kinds of niche teams without spending lots of prima gems on them, they're not unplayable, they're just <laughs> not amazing, objectively speaking. So, overall, as much as I wish HoYoVerse hadn't done Faro's on this dirty, because she does feel god-awful to play at C0, I don't think it's the end of the world for her or other future characters like her. Players that really want to invest in Faruzan for their niche animo teams will be able to save prima gems and eventually bring home the right gear to make these teams extremely powerful. But players that don't want to have to do that don't have to. Animo teams are just one little corner of Genshin's infinitely large range of team archetypes, and many of the game's best teams are free to play accessible and easy to invest in. So as long as hyperscaling units remain as the only units who receive this dramatic scaling treatment, like Faruzan, Ito, Wanderer, Goro, Sara, etc., I don't feel that there's any major major harm being done to the game or the community. At the end of the day, these characters and their teams are niche, and usually don't explicitly outperform most other teams that are easier to invest in anyways. So it's not like they're power creeping the game and locking out essential characters behind paywalls. You don't have to have these characters by any means at all, because they're generally only strong within their own archetypes. And again, as much as I do wish they had gone a little easier on Faruzan at low investment, I still don't think it's the end of the world for her. And especially not once she's at C6, because that C6 is just absolutely unrealistically, obscenely insane insanely good for her and her animal damage dealers. Anyways, I'm done ranting. If you enjoyed this video or it helped you in any way, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.